guys and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are talking all about social media, influencers, influencer culture, um, the quote unquote social media is fake trend that I just keep seeing. So all of that, all of that stuff because I feel like I have a lot to say and I asked y'all on my Instagram if you had any thoughts or opinions and a lot of y'all did. So we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. But first, um, of course, talk about me because why not? So I feel like this week I did a lot. By a lot, I mean like I actually did social things, I guess, which is fun and exciting. Um, But on Monday, I had a college interview and I actually had to miss my academic team meet for it, which ended up being a bigger thing than I thought because so many people had to miss that we had to forfeit. And then I got a really aggressive email saying that if you wanted to be a part of the team, um, (laughs) that you needed to be committed. And I was like, y'all, I'm sorry. I don't know if anyone has told you this, but this is academic team. Can we chill? But you know, it's, it's whatever. I am going to one tomorrow as in Monday, because of course, you know me, I procrastinated doing this. It is, in fact, Sunday night. But, okay, this time it actually is valid because I was doing a lot this weekend and, like, during the week. Um, But on Monday, I went to this live music thing with my dad because his birthday was on Tuesday. And that was, like, two hours and it was bluegrass music, which I've never really listened to. So, that was interesting. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much, like, um... They kept calling it, like, front porch music. I don't exactly know what that means, but it's, uh, I guess kind of country-ish, but not really. It's, it's good, though. I really liked it. Um, I guess it's Kentucky. Oh, that is not what I meant to say. Technically, like, more southern, maybe? Not really sure, though, because at the performance, they had these foreign exchange students from Hungary. And they sang, like, their own version of, like, bluegrass, which I guess it's folk music, so kind of something like that, if you will. Um, But that was really interesting, and that was fun to go with my dad. And then, of course, Tuesday, it's my dad's birthday. He is 63. He is a boomer, in fact. And um, we had a birthday dinner at this fancy restaurant, kind of downtown-ish, but not really. And that was where I had a super fun chat with my parents about college you love those don't you um you know those like super stressful talks that you're like uh I'm about to cry right now it was like that it was pretty much me getting yelled at for like an hour it was so fun I loved that um (laughs) such a great time I mean it wasn't really like they were yelling at me they were just like telling me stuff that I should be doing to help even though I mean, I've submitted all my applications, right? Uh, Actually, I haven't submitted all of them. I've submitted eight out of nine. I still have to do one more, but it's not due uh, for like a week or two. So I feel like it's fine. They were just getting very intense and it was overwhelming and I wanted to cry. So I tried to end that conversation, but yeah. Yeah. So, if you argue with your parents, that's okay. I do too. You're not alone. Sometimes I think they're wrong, but they tell me that I am not and that they know more than me, which maybe that's true, but, like, I think it would be nice if I could figure it out for myself. You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also on from Thursday to Saturday, I went to this mock government conference in um a different city in kentucky it's called kya so like kentucky youth assembly it was a time yeah it (laughs) i just think it's so funny but it's pretty much if you don't have anything like that or if you don't know what it is it's like a y conference so like ymca and Usually there's more kids that go, but I think this year there were around 400 just because of COVID. They couldn't have as many, which ended up being fine. It did feel like a lot less people. I think they said there's usually like 700 kids 
which is kind of crazy. Um, but again, it's like a mock government conference, so like modeling the U.S. government. So obviously, we're in, I'm in Kentucky, so it was like about Kentucky related things, and people would present bills related to Kentucky that had to pass the House and the Senate, and then would go to the governor. And then they also had a judicial um, group of people that were doing God knows what. I don't know what they do. I didn't do that. But I got to do so fun on the first night, which was Thursday. Let me backtrack and just explain how awful this was. So the conference didn't start until like 3, 3.45, 4 on a Thursday. So I had to be at school <laughs> until lunch. So I went to all my classes but two that day. And this was, it was actually so exhausting, but I went to all my classes, but two, and then we drove an hour and a half and then, oh, the conference started. And then I had to be a committee chair, which pretty much just means I was delegating the debate. So I was like picking people to call on and like leading that. And I mean, that was pretty fun. I did mess up, LOL. It was fine. But it was honestly really fun, and you have to, like, dress up and look professional. So the weirdest thing, though, is seeing a bunch of 16, 17, 18-year-olds dressed up in professional business attire. I just think it it made me laugh so much because I was like, we look ridiculous. We really do. And some people have the cutest outfits they had, like a blazer with a matching skirt and had cute patterns on it. Other people, not it, not it. Um, I would say my outfit's pretty good not gonna lie um but it was really fun and then on the next day I was a clerk for a chamber which meant that I got to keep time as in I got to set timers for four hours that's what I did on Friday I clicked start stop reset for four hours and then I had to do two spreadsheets so pretty much I was a secretary and I will say I know that I don't want to do that with life that is not my life purpose it's very extremely boring and on Friday it was also exhausting and I would say the main thing about the entire conference is that I just realized how much like time I can't be with people all the time because I need my alone time and having to be with others even in like hotel rooms for two nights I had to be with three other girls they're all my friends though so that was fine having to be with three other girls and then having to speak to other people all day see other people from different schools see people from my school which honestly is worse than seeing other people because I'm just done with that (laughs) um but it was honestly so exhausting and on the bus ride back I was just put my head down put in headphones and pretended to be asleep so no one would talk to me because I was socially exhausted I can't be with people that much. I get really pissed off and annoyed and very snappy and I just can't socialize for that long, which might be a personality flaw of mine, but honestly, whatever, it's fine. And yeah, the conference was fun. We got back on Saturday in the afternoon and then later that day, I went to the UK football game versus Tennessee and we lost and it was very embarrassing. And I'm not a big football person, but I will say I got into that a little bit. And I was there with my whole family, minus Hadley, because it was my older brother's birthday. So we were all celebrating. And then my younger brother, Reed, flew up from Virginia. And we all went to the game together. It was very cold. I was wearing a hat and gloves and a winter coat and pants and, like, boots. It was freezing. And the stadium, of course, is outside. So low-key miserable. And we were there. From, I would say we left our house at 6 and got back at 11. What is that? Five hours for one football game. It lasted forever. Literally forever. It took so long. But honestly, it was fun. It was fine. But yeah, that was my weekend. And then today, since I missed two days of school, or I guess a day and a half of school, I was just making up homework all day, slash making a bunch of TikToks because. The lighting in my room was really good, not gonna lie, and it was just, I don't know, it was just kind of working for me, so I was just going with that, but I still have to do homework, 
it's 5 30 the clock set back that was a shock for me this morning didn't know had absolutely no idea but honestly oh well what are you gonna do okay now let's talk a little bit about social media so i want to start off with some of your all's thoughts because obviously that's what matters most um since you guys are the ones listening and i'm sure y'all all have some of the at least similar opinions maybe some of you guys are different i feel like these are pretty general for most people though and how most people feel about social media and yeah okay so a lot of people said that who you follow has a really big effect on your perception of yourself self-esteem confidence and just general insecurities For example, if you follow models, you might be more focused on, like, certain body types. Or if you follow, like, workout people, you might be really obsessed with, like, doing certain workouts and working out certain times a day or eating a certain amount of calories. If you follow a food account or even just following friends, I feel like on Instagram, you can see someone and you're like, oh my gosh, they're at the beach. That looks so fun. But I definitely agree with this, just like who you follow really affects how you feel about yourself because I know for me, I can be living my best life and then I'll go on Instagram and I'll see someone who maybe is somewhere or is with someone or maybe it looks like whatever or is wearing something that's super cute. Maybe it really makes them look good and then I'm like, hmm, I wish I had that or I wish I looked like that. But also at the same time, I feel like I used to feel like that more, maybe not as often now. I mean, obviously, I do feel like that sometimes because for some people, I'm like, you're literally unreal. You're gorgeous. But I think it's definitely important to see someone and appreciate them and what they do, what they look like. But then also realize that someone else's beauty doesn't diminish your own that you can be beautiful and other people can be beautiful as well. You can be smart, someone else can be smart. You can be funny, other people can be funny. You don't have to be the only one. They don't have to be the only one either. I feel like this is a really easy concept, but definitely hard to grasp for some because it's easy to feel threatened by someone else if you think you aren't good enough. I feel like especially right now, or at least for me, I felt kind of like that and I've had to stop myself and be like, whoa, Carmen, what are you doing? This isn't you, especially with college, because I know for a lot of colleges, I'm applying to a lot of the same schools as some of the other people that go to my school that are in my grade or maybe some of my friends from different schools. And obviously that creates a lot of comparison because you're like, are they going to get in? Am I going to get in? Are we both going to get in? The thing is, you never know because you might be like, oh, well, they have better grades than me. Maybe they have better test scores. Maybe they have this really cool extracurricular curricular activity or they're just really good at talking to people. And I'm sure their interview was so much better than mine. Just having these thoughts go on in my head. And that's been a little overwhelming as well, because especially the school that I really want to go to, I know so many people that are applying there. And that just makes it really hard not to compare myself because obviously with the college application it is like you're comparing people like who's gonna get in who's not gonna get in and that's just kind of the nature of it I feel like but definitely not the best for your mental health I can attest to that and I think that also relates to social media like seeing people online and what they might look like or um how they might act, how many followers they have, especially if you are a creator yourself, if you are an influencer, if you have an art account, if you have just like a TikTok page, whatever, if you see someone else who's doing something similar and they have more followers than you, it's easy to think that you're kind of inferior or maybe that they're doing so much better than you for a specific reason or maybe you just don't feel as great about yourself. You could be on the moon living your best life And then you see someone and they have maybe like 10,000 more followers than you and you're like, oh my gosh, I suck. I'm so much, I'm so much worse than them. And I know, especially for me, I have felt that just because uh, with my podcast and like when I was first starting out, seeing like what I was doing compared to people who had 
maybe 2,000 followers or when I grew more, people had 60,000 followers or 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Just seeing the difference between the accounts. And honestly, when I look back at it now, I think that's kind of ridiculous because it's hard to remember that we all start at different times, that we are all coming from different places with different expertise. Maybe some people buy followers, some people uh, just have grown really quickly and that's okay. Some people might be doing something that is popping off right now and maybe what you're doing isn't working as well. And that's okay too. You'll figure it out. And I think that's something that I've really had to learn, especially too, because um, just taking on the more influencer stance. But let me just say this because I really hate it. The word influencer just kind of gives me the ick, kind of makes me want to gag a little, if you know. Um, But because I've had people who have called me an influencer and I just don't feel that way. But I mean, obviously on Instagram, I have 30,000 followers. On TikTok, I have like 50,000. And I guess that would make me considered an influencer, but I truly don't feel that way. Um, But I guess according to some people, I am. I know my dad showed someone at his work a TikTok I made because my dog was in it. And it was like one of the nurse practitioners. She was like, oh my gosh, is your daughter one of those influencers? And my dad was like, yeah. And I was, and I was just thinking, dad, this is so embarrassing. Like, please don't tell people this, <laughs> you know, because I feel like when you tell older people, if they're like, what do you do? And you say social media, they'll just look at you like you're stupid because obviously, I mean, it might not be a real job. Okay. Never said it was, but it could be for some people, maybe not for me, but it's just for fun. You know, I don't know where I was going with this. But it just bothers me how people, like, call other people influencers. I don't know because I guess I am an influencer, but it's, I don't like that word. I don't know. I don't, mm, mm, mm. I totally forgot what I was going to say about this. Um, hmm. Don't remember, but. I think another thing with influencers is that you also kind of have this really big responsibility for people that follow you. And I feel like there's a feeling of needing to do right by people and needing to be perfect and needing to look good. Just because if you have so many people following you, obviously you don't want to mess up. Things seem more serious because more people are seeing you. And I think that also has to do with social media and how people try to present quote unquote, like the best version of themselves, because I know a lot of y'all said that um, some influencers just seem a little too perfect, or maybe that they give the wrong influence. And I think that does have to do with like the feeling of the pressure that when you start to grow, when you start getting people who um, are DMing you, whether it's positive or negative, you really do feel this responsibility of what you say actually matters and that there's people who are going to take your word for it so you kind of have to be more conscious about that and you have a responsibility to them not to give them the wrong information and I think that kind of has to do with it and again with like seeming too perfect I think you have to keep in mind that Instagram is literally a platform with pictures and less than like 30 second videos okay you can't see that much of someone's life (laughs) from that and I think you just have to remember that because a lot of people are like social media is fake because this person looks good in this picture but in real life they actually don't look like this all the time my thing is yes that's the point okay the point is that Social media, it's where you look good. It's where you supposedly feel your best, look your best. And that's literally the point of it because most people don't want to go around showing pictures of of themselves where they look ugly. They maybe didn't shower. Maybe their hair is a mess. Maybe they're just like in sweatpants and a sweatshirt and they have stains on all over themselves, whatever. It doesn't matter. People aren't going to post that because one, no one cares. And like two, It makes you feel bad about yourself. And I feel like the purpose of social media 
it's more to show the best version of yourself, which in a way can be encouraging to some people. But on the other hand, it can definitely bring down others because obviously if you're showing your best, the best version of yourself and always pre- presenting that side, people will end up thinking that's all there is to it. But again, with social media, you can't show everything. And again, people are allowed to have their own lives. They're allowed to have something separate than Instagram or TikTok. You don't have to show your entire self, but it can be perceived like this is all there is to someone, which again makes me kind of upset. And I really don't like when people say social media is fake because I don't think it is necessarily fake. I think you're just showing the best version of yourself. Maybe it's not how you look every single day 24 7 okay but if you think about it in real life people are going about their everyday lives going to school going to work whatever they look average and then if you're going to a birthday dinner if you're going to a party you're getting dressed up you're looking nice okay it's not like we're saying when someone dresses up oh my god you're so fake because you put on makeup okay you don't say that to someone in real life, which just, it seems kind of funny to me that people say that about social media. But again, I totally understand where it's coming from. And I feel like I'm going to get DMs from people who are going to be like, I can't believe you said this. I totally feel like social media is fake. And again, if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. We're allowed to think different things. I'm just saying with my experience of being someone who has like a personal Instagram account who follows different celebrities, different art accounts, musicians, um, friends, family, whatever. I know how it feels to like be on the receiving end of people's content. But on the other hand, I also know what it is like to create content and to have people interact with you and to be responsible for what someone else sees. So I feel like I kind of see both sides in a way. But again, We all have different (laughs) opinions on that, but I have, in fact, gotten, like, more on the influencer side. I think there's also a bit of a fear of saying certain things and exposing parts about yourself just because people are, can be so negative. Like, the amount of times I've had to turn off comments or I have, for example, like, a bunch of filters on my comments of specific words that people have said, people have used. Um, calling me names, like bad words, whatever, saying stuff about me that isn't kind, like I have. I think I've used almost all the words on my comment filters on it on Instagram, and on Instagram I've also had to turn off comments on certain videos. I've had to delete some comments of people just being nasty and like being really rude. And I also think that's like part of why people are afraid to maybe show like all of themselves just for a fear of criticism because when you're on the internet it's really easy not to worry about how another person is going to feel by you commenting something and maybe you think it's something stupid and maybe you think no one's going to care but then that happens to be the one comment someone sees when they're scrolling through their notifications and it's something like really evil and rude I don't know I'm trying to think of something but maybe it's someone like calling you a bad name or saying this is so stupid or maybe I think I posted a TikTok. I remember this was the one that I had so many just bad comments that I had to just turn it off. Um, It was like a video of me joking about it was like when you work at when you're hostess at a sushi restaurant and people actually want to come in and eat. Which, obviously, that's a joke. But some people didn't get that, I guess. And they're commenting. They're like, oh, my God, you're such a privileged white little girl. And, like, commenting, stuff like that. They're like, this is why women shouldn't work. Or, like, really misogynistic um, things and saying stuff that was super rude. And, obviously, I'm like, (laughs) y'all, this is a joke. And I'm the person. I will respond to mean comments and I'll be super nice. I'll say, like, hey. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for boosting my engagement. I'm sorry you feel this way. And I'm sorry that you feel so bad about yourself that you have to comment negative things to make you feel better and like feel more confident in yourself because you're so insecure. 
I will literally say that and then I'll get a notification that someone has deleted their comment. Come with kindness. That's not even kind, but like being me being passive aggressive in my comments. Yep. Yes, I do do that. And I'm not ashamed. I'll, I will say that. But I think people get afraid of posting things because of criticism. Because you're afraid of what someone else might say. Or like maybe you don't want to show that side of yourself because you think your audience is really niche. And maybe they wouldn't be able to relate to that. I know I had um, Alexa who was on the podcast over the summer when we talked about food. And she was talking about how... Yes, she runs a healthy eating account, but she's also struggled with an eating disorder and how that has affected her. And she always gets like really tempted to talk about that and like to talk about recovery tips. But whenever she does, she gets a lot of backlash of people like who don't agree with that and who don't want to hear about it and are just there to see her food. So I think it's definitely a balance between like doing and showing parts of yourself that your audience wants but also like being genuine enough and I know for me personally I don't know if I've necessarily struggled with being that genuine because obviously I have a podcast where I talk all the time um so it's not just like I'm some person on TikTok who just got famous for looking hot (laughs) or whatever like a lot of people have But because I actually post things, I actually have something that I do, um, not to like throw shade on other people, because obviously that's valid. If you can get famous and go viral for just being hot, literally, why not? Because I know some people get so salty with that, but you do you. If you can make money from just being pretty, props to you, okay? I'm not going to say anything. I know some people might get mad. Some people might say, that's not right. Pretty privilege. Yes, pretty privilege does exist. But if you're stupid enough not to use it to your advantage, what are you doing? Okay. If you have it, use it. That's my thing. And that was something else that someone said was that a lot of influencers don't deserve to be famous or don't deserve to have fans and that they just kind of gained fame through looking good which I definitely think is valid a lot of people definitely don't deserve the attention but I was just laughing reading these because some people were like influencers shouldn't exist influencers are all bad and none of them deserve anything and I was like y'all are saying this while I'm literally in I guess, quote unquote, influencer. And I was just laughing because (laughs) I was like, I feel like someone's throwing shade at me. But then again, I don't necessarily see myself as an influencer. So I don't know if y'all do. But I've had people who tell me that they're like, oh my God, Carmen, you're so quirky. You're an influencer. Or people at school who would just like make fun of me. They're like, oh my God, she's an influencer. Which honestly, I feel like that just means you're kind of jealous because I have thousands of followers and you don't and you're like a high schooler who has to make me feel bad because I'm good at something like okay and like what do you want me to do um but I definitely do agree that a lot of people probably don't deserve something but still people follow them and also I think it's funny that it's the same people who say so-and-so doesn't deserve the fame that is also someone who is always looking at what they post stalking them looking at all their stories through all their tiktoks through all their instagram posts but then at the same time they're like they don't deserve any of the followers and then they're they follow them i feel like that's usually how it goes especially when addison ray and like charlie d'amelio were getting popular people saying oh they don't deserve the fame and hey, maybe they didn't, but I mean, they have it and people still follow them. Millions of people follow them. So obviously they're doing something right and they do deserve something. So I think that's definitely valid. Like even if you can't understand why someone is famous, they're obviously doing something that people like, or maybe they're just being relatable enough where millions of people like them. Hey, then that's valid. If you can do that, good for you. Okay. And I think that I just think that's funny. There's like a whole thing when Charlie was first getting famous where 
people are like, this is so stupid. She's just a teenage girl. She's not even that cute. She's not even that pretty. Like, she's not even that good of a dancer. Like, obviously, she has something, though, because why is everyone following her? If you, if you get what I'm saying, like, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, some of y'all also said that social media is not always bad, but it can definitely be toxic. And I'll have to agree with that because I think social media can be great. It can be great for seeing art, for seeing new people, for finding like positive influencers who really build you up, or even just like seeing what friends are doing. But then on the other side, you have things where people maybe don't make you feel your best, where even if they're not trying to, if you just see someone who's in a bikini who looks great, maybe you feel bad about yourself from seeing that. Or maybe you see friends who have gone on a trip and maybe it's a group of friends that you're all friends with them and they didn't invite you, but they posted something. And that just kind of makes you feel bad. I think it definitely can make you feel inferior. But also at the same time, it is what you make it. Because if you think about it, there's two different ways to view something. Like using the example of the, a bikini picture. If you see someone in a bikini, it's some celebrity and maybe they're really skinny. Their body looks great. The swimsuit is great. Their hair is shiny. Whatever you want it to be. Um, and that's what you see. There's two different ways I think you could interpret that. You could see it as, oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. They look so great. And just stop it there. And just like leave it at that. Or on the other hand, you have, oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. They look so great. Why don't I look like that? And you have to realize that if you're rich, (laughs) if you have a lot of money, you have a lot more to work with. You have hair and makeup teams, professional photography. And also, I think it's important to remember, the the majority of y'all listening, you're a teenager, okay? You're not supposed to look like a model. You're allowed to go through awkward phases, even if you're a grown adult. You don't have to look like a freaking model. Not everyone can be a model, and that's okay. But again, going back to what I said earlier, like someone else's beauty doesn't diminish your own. Just because someone, some random person on the internet is beautiful and is a supermodel, doesn't mean that you are any less pretty just because someone might be prettier than you and again it's all up to interpretation because maybe what I might find beautiful is different from what someone else might find beautiful so you never know and also I feel like it's more about how you really treat yourself and feel about yourself just because if you're so worried about what other people are going to think and how other people are going to view you and if someone else is going to think you're beautiful, then maybe that's just a sign to show that you don't feel so good about yourself and that you need to maybe work a little more on being kind to yourself and hyping yourself up and really taking a good look at yourself and just saying, like, how do I see myself? Am I being loving to myself? Am I being kind Am I being genuine? Am I being honest with myself about how I really actually feel and am? Because another thing, like when you look in the mirror, you know, some days you look at yourself and you see the most gorgeous person ever and you stand there and stop and you're like, why is everyone not obsessed with me? Like, why is the entire world not falling at my feet and like proclaiming their love, you know? And then other days, it's, oh my god, I look like a dead sewer rat. And the thing is, most times, nothing really changed about you. It really didn't. It's just the perception you have about yourself that has changed, not you exactly. Because this can be, you can feel great about yourself one day, and then literally the next morning, feel awful. So it's about perception, not necessarily how you actually look. I think it has a lot to do with acceptance and being kind to yourself and realizing your beauty and also remembering that being pretty (laughs) isn't the only thing that matters. In my English class, we're reading Jane Eyre right now. And one of the main things about Jane Eyre, it was like a book in the 1800s, was that Jane is not pretty. And they point that out a million times. 
and it seems a little like repetitive and like a little cruel to keep pointing out how ugly Jane is or how just like plain she is and the thing about it though is that there's so many great other qualities she has she's smart she's a teacher she's good she's like a good overall person and I think that you have to remember that too even if you might not be a supermodel you can be smart you can be funny maybe you're really good at knitting I don't know I just thought of that I don't even knit I don't know anyone who knits I just said that but sorry that was weird um maybe you know someone who's a really great tambourine player these examples wow complete fire okay Maybe you know someone who has a podcast, (laughs) me, and is technically, like, has soft fame or whatever. Uh, It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, we're all good at something. We all have something that might stand out more. But physical beauty isn't the only thing that matters. And honestly, if you really think about it, people who are, I guess, stereotypically pretty and, um... That's like the main thing about them or the most interesting people or generally, yes, I'm making a generalization, but it, this isn't to say everyone, but I would say in general, a lot of people who are naturally beautiful or naturally um, what people would c- consider the beauty standard aren't the most interesting people, aren't the funniest people because they haven't had to like make up for their looks by being interesting it's more just like things always come to them they don't have to be like a really cool interesting person but again that's not always the case like you can be gorgeous and smart and funny and that's great good for you but maybe not for everyone but again beauty is different in everyone's own eyes so maybe you see someone and they might not be beautiful to you but to someone else that's the most beautiful person they've ever seen so it's subjective and it's all up to perception so again I feel like social media shouldn't be taken that seriously it's meant to be something that's fun it's meant to be something to give you inspiration and I think when you change your view on that by seeing like it as something less negative it will be overall more positive for you like if you're someone who says social media is fake Maybe that is just kind of an excuse for why you might not feel great about yourself or for like maybe validating your feelings and really make trying to make yourself unconsciously feel better because if social media is fake, then these people don't actually look like this and that you are actually okay the way you are. Um, that's just me speculating, but I feel like that's kind of where it's coming from. A fly just flew right around my face. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, awkward. Um, but yeah, again, it's subjective. I feel like social media isn't fake. I feel like it's real. I think it, in some people, you, they will use a million filters. They will, you can change your body, obviously, but overall... There's some version of it that is real, or maybe some version of it is part of the truth. It might not be the whole truth, but I don't think we can call it fake. At least that's my opinion, and that's how I feel. And also, I know a lot of y'all said on my Instagram that you wish social media and influencers were more realistic. And I totally agree with that because it definitely is hard seeing like people who have certain lifestyles who it might not, who it, or I uh, can't speak, that whose lifestyles seem perfect or maybe ideal. But again, it's important to remember this is not what someone does every day. This is something someone's doing for a video. Like, if you remember that, the quote-unquote that girl trend of being healthy, living your best life, whatever it was, um, seeing those videos, it's like, what I eat in a day, uh, what, how, my exercise, my daily exercises, or my morning routine, it's not necessarily, like, this might be someone's morning routine every day, maybe this is their morning routine on their best day, when they're feeling their best, maybe this happens once a year, okay, this might not be what it is for everyone, but I think, You can also view something like this, this type of content, as motivation rather than something to make you feel 
bad about yourself. But again, you don't have to strive for what you see on social media because if you're living your best life, if you think things are going well, then stick with that. Social media, it's more meant to be something positive or at least that's how I feel. That's how I would like to view it because I know if I start thinking of it as something that's fake, something that's negative, that that's going to have an influence on me and definitely my page overall because obviously for my podcast page, I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to bring people up. I post motivational quotes. I try to post relatable reels. Um, Obviously, my podcast episodes in general, I try to be more positive or at least be realistic. Um, So I feel like if I saw social media negatively, that would definitely influence me on what I post. Maybe I would post less. Maybe I would post not as many things because I'm like, so if social media is fake, why does it matter? You know, what I do and what influence can I actually have? Um, so I think that's really important to just think about. Um, and then also I would say just be mindful of people you interact with on the internet because you might see someone with thousands of followers or maybe just a few hundred and think, oh, if I comment this, they're never going to see it. Or if I DM them, they're never going to see it. Trust me, we do see it. (laughs) I've had a lot of people DM me hurtful things saying, um, they're like, I know you're never going to see this, but I'm going to send it anyway. Oh, honey, I did see it. I have just chosen to take the high road and not respond. That's another thing is like choosing whether or not you're going to interact with someone who's trying to bring you down just because obviously there's a lot of insecure people who want to bring you down to make themselves feel better. And it's kind of hard (laughs) being the bigger person and not just like attacking someone else and being like you're literally 12 and you have 20 followers shut up because that is so tempting it really is it really is you can't say that um because maybe what they have to say is actually valid and it just might hurt you or maybe it's not and they're just being cruel so I think that's another thing to remember influencers have feelings they're real people even if but they post might not seem so, so, so realistic. It is a part of their life. Um, so be mindful of that. But yeah, that's, I guess, my stance on social media and like sprinkled in a lot of your all stances and like how you feel, which I feel like the general consensus is that it can be bad, but also it's great. It's a really good platform. Obviously, people love it if they're using it. And it can actually be positive. It can add things to your life. But I totally understand like it being toxic. I definitely think at points in my life it has been toxic and I have had to like remove it just because it wasn't beneficial to me anymore. And like going off of that, I'd like to point out that if you're following someone who doesn't make you feel good about yourself, who you keep noticing yourself compare yourself to, and who just makes you really feel crappy overall unfollow them okay whether it's a celebrity some random influencer or a friend or maybe something you just know from your hometown they don't make you feel good about yourself unfollow them okay it's not personal it's just doing what's best for you it's like kind of weeding through the people that really aren't the best for you maybe someone else loves this person but if they're not good for you you don't need to follow them you don't owe them anything and i think You should think about that. So, like, next time you go on Instagram, if you see something on your feed and it just kind of fills you with dread and makes you feel bad about yourself, click on their profile and unfollow them, okay? I 10 out of 10 recommend it. Whether you're an influencer and it's someone who has more followers than you and it makes you feel bad, whatever, unfollow them. Maybe follow them at a different point in time when you feel more confident in yourself. But another thing, like, You're never going to feel satisfied with the amount of followers you have. You're never going to feel like you've done enough or that you are, like, affecting as many people as you can because that's just not how it works. Um, So, again, it can be difficult. It definitely can take a toll, but that's only if you let it. So, be mindful, I would definitely say. And, yeah, that's all I got to say. Um... Thank y'all for listening. Make sure you follow me on Instagram if you think (laughs) I'll be positive. I don't know. I try. I really do try to be as realistic as I can. But again, if I'm not feeling my best, like 
I'm not posting on social media if I don't post for a while it's because I don't feel good it's because like mentally I'm just not there and I think that's okay too so it's important to just remember that influencers are real people people who post on Instagram are real they aren't just like someone you see on a screen but yeah make sure you leave a review like subscribe and I'll see y'all next week bye